The future Grand Admiral Thrawn, also known as Mithra Nuru Odo and initially Kivu Ra Nuru, was born in around 59 BBY on the Chiss planet of Rentor, located near the capital planet of Chila in the Unknown Regions. With the original core name of Vuron, Thrawn was born into a less fortunate family within the Chiss ascendancy known as the Kivu. Now I'm not going to dive too much into this because this video is about Thrawn himself, but he does have an elder sister who he lost when she was five and he was three, who possessed force-sensitive abilities which the Chiss referred to as Third Sight. Something to take into account is the fact that Third Sight is very seldom found within the Chiss, but when it is, it is really only within Chiss girls who are very young. However, they generally lose this ability as they age. They are essentially never taken to the Jedi Temple and instead are used as navigators due to their foresight being useful to traverse through the dangerous space in the unknown regions. Anyhow, Thrawn would of course attend classes at a young age that would test his logic and general ability to accomplish tasks required within the Chiss Ascendancy and he would excel in them. On this topic, he would become so talented that higher ranking families within the Ascendancy would take notice of his abilities and send an aristocrat, one who would recruit cadets for the nine ruling families to fully assess Thrawn's talent. This aristocrat was named Thras, and he would eventually consider Thrawn a brother. Regardless, Thrawn would join the Myth family to officially become Mithra Nuru, core named Thrawn, and he would have a welcoming ceremony in 39 BBY, a very common event for new members of the family. Upon joining his new family, Thrawn would attend to Harm Academy on the planet Naporar, this being his first time in space. While on the vessel the Tamra, Thrawn would encounter a 13-year-old Chiss navigator who possesses third Site named Aliasov, and she seemed to be upset over something, though he was unsure of what that was. As Thrawn greets her and asks if she's alright, she reveals that she's the daughter of Captain Vorlip, junior commander of the Tamra. As Aliasov nears the coming of age, her time with Third Sight, and consequently her time as a navigator, comes to a close. Because of this, she is upset over her failure to properly navigate the ship, and with Thrawn possessing empathy for her due to the loss of his sister, who was very similar, Thrawn attempts to to cheer her up, but is interrupted by Vorlip and scolded by her for entering a restricted section of the ship. Alyastov would actually end up joining the Meath family as well, becoming Meath Alyastov, and she would later join Thrawn on his ship, the Springcock, as a caregiver. Before we continue onward, something I'd like to mention is that Thrawn further proves his intelligence and ability when Vorlip tells him to close his eyes as she spins him around as a way to make him lose direction, and she tells him to point in the direction of the ship's bow as a test. Of course, he correctly identifies that particular section of the ship and is dismissed. Funnily enough, as he is no longer in the room, Vorlip tells her daughter that it took her several trips to memorize each part of the vessel and to obtain such an astute sense of direction. After visiting Naporor, Thrawn would attend a dinner dedicated to his admins into the Myth family in Chiss Ascendancy military on Avidich. This happened to fall on the same day as his sister Starde, the day a member of the Chiss species first sees a star when they are taken to the skylight, and instead of fully enjoying himself, he is saddened as he remembers losing her as she became a navigator and died so young. It is here where Thrawn would also greet the aforementioned Thras as he asks Thrawn how long he would be staying at the Meath family compound and this would be the start of their great friendship. These two Chiss were purposely put together by higher-ups as both were very talented in different fields and were believed to complement each other well. In fact, Thrawn did not have to do certain things required for the common Chiss joining the Ascendancy as they had so much faith in his ability and believed Thrawn and Thras would take the Chiss Ascendancy to a new level of success. Continuing to impress his peers as not only a capable member of their military, but also a cultured being, Thrawn would surprise Thras as he would be able to name the artist of several paintings present in the comic. Compound, an introduction into his fascination with the art and culture of not only his species, but many others. If you're interested, the artist was actually a Chiss female from thousands of years prior named Mithomo Rasodo, who lost all four of her sons in a battle on Chila. Nevertheless, while a cadet at Taharam Academy, Thrawn would continue to excel and would score much higher than anyone else in a combat simulation given by senior cadet Aralani. In fact, Thrawn would score much higher than anyone else in the history of the Academy, resulting in his peers accusing him of cheating. In order to prove his innocence, Thrawn would redo the same simulation in front of a higher up, a test that he would pass and prove his innocence with. In the process of taking these combat exams, Thrawn would invent a stealth maneuver that would disable the sensors on an enemy ship, causing his ship to disappear from the view of the other opposing ships. 
It was actually Aralani that called in the higher up to spectate Thrawn, and after some time, an appreciative Thrawn would invite her to an art gallery on Naporar to study the art of other species, and as a result, learn their military strategies. Aralani would eventually get bored of this, and would challenge Thrawn to a duel in a sparring session with combat sticks, based off of what information Thrawn could garner about her art. Thrawn would impress her by defeating her. In the year 37 BBY, Thrawn would graduate from Taharam Academy after two years of attendance and become a junior officer in the Chiss Expansionary Defense Fleet. As a junior commander, Thrawn would further prove his genius tactical strategies against pirates in a skirmish in the Kaina system. This would eventually lead to him gaining the rank of senior commander and him serving under senior captain Aralani aboard the Parala for the time being. During this time, Thrawn, along with the rest of the crew under Aralani, would answer several distress calls in the unknown regions and the space in which the Chiss Ascendancy operated. The last mission Thrawn had as senior commander took place during the Solitaire Affair, where the natives of the planet Solitaire, the Garbians, pretended to be under attack by diplomatic ships, asking Thrawn to aid them. However, as Aralani would point out, the Chiss were not allowed to attack anything or anyone that wasn't outright hostile due to their non-aggression laws. However, Thrawn had already given tactical information that the Garweans would subsequently use against said diplomatic ships. As a result of his actions, Thrawn would be demoted to mid-commander, but despite this, he would be given command of the aforementioned Springhawk. This, of course, would cause dissension amongst the already feuding ruling families as Thrawn had been punished but also rewarded for his actions, along with the fact that the Meath and Arezi families were already arguing about which family Thrawn should be in. Nonetheless, Thrawn would join Thras on a mission to recover a powerful weapon known as Starflash, where they would take down multiple members of the species known as the Patatis. As a result of their success, Thrawn would be given the suffix of Odo, which translates to Guardian by the Stibla family, being only one of of eight non stibla chists to receive this suffix and have it added to their full name. Thrawn would continue displaying his tactical prowess even more the more missions he was given, gaining a positive and negative reputation. On that specific topic, while gaining many victories against any attackers of the Chiss ascendancy and protecting the ones he cares about, Thrawn would also bend the rules occasionally and use strategies and tactics sometimes too harsh for the typical Chiss. My job, the sole reason for my existence is to defend the Chiss Ascendancy and protect my people. I will do whatever is necessary to achieve that goal, and I will allow nothing and no one to stand in my way. At some point, Thrawn and Thras would have a conversation where they would reveal secrets to each other as brothers. When it came time for Thrawn to share something, Thras would ask him what it was that bothered him the day of Thrawn's initiation into the Myth family. Surprised that Thras would remember this, Thrawn tells him he once had a sister who was presumed dead, though he believed she was still alive somewhere, and Thras would actually tell Thrawn that he'll look into all potential records to find out if she is indeed still alive. As it would turn out, Thras actually finds out that Thrawn's sister did survive, and would join the Arezi family. This information would be passed to Aliastov, and she would meet Thrawn's sister later on. After a hostile interaction with Vagari pirates and putting an end to their operations, Thrawn would acquire the rank of senior captain and be treated for his wounds, though he would end up losing command of the Springhawk. In 19 BBY, a very important year in the Star Wars galaxy for various reasons, and as Thrawn continues to heal, Chila and the Chiss Ascendancy would be attacked by unknown enemies, eventually revealed to be the Nicardoon Destiny. Before the Chiss discovered who was behind this attack, however, they would take action to avoid being looked at as weak by launching an assault on the Patatis. The Patatis had also trespassed into the trading routes of the Chiss too much for the taste of the Ascendancy, another reason for choosing them as the example to set. Thrawn would be granted back command of the Springhawk and would find evidence that the Nick Cardoon posed a far greater threat than once realized by the Chiss. Despite some higher-ups expressing anger at Thrawn, he would manage to learn tactical information on the opponent and even capture one of their ships, a controversial move as, according to some, it fell under the category of a preemptive strike, though Thrawn would claim that it was self-defense against an aggressor. 
After traveling to a system recently conquered by the Nikar Dune, Thrawn would pretend to be a Chiss family hostage and act as though he did not fully understand the Chiss, attempting to eat away at the confidence of the Nikar Dune general's plan to conquer the Ascendancy, giving time to his people in order to set up defenses against a likely invasion. In addition, using maps and recently conquered peoples of the unknown regions under the Nikar Dune, Thrawn would come to the conclusion that the enemy would likely attempt to encircle the Chiss Ascendancy while conquering nearby civilizations. While disguised and using the help of the Garbian Unity, who learned to never cross the Chiss, Thrawn would attend a diplomatic meeting on Primia and meet with Nick Cardoon leader, Yiv the Benevolent. Here he would use tactics to instill the belief that the Chiss were not the easiest to conquer, and the two would analyze art and sculptures of the Vak people who were natives of the planet they are currently on. Thrawn would impress Yiv, who admitted that he now understood how much of a challenge Thrawn would pose against the Nick Cardoon. As a result, Yiv would attempt to kill Thrawn, as he assumed Thrawn would board a vessel in order to escape the planet. However, the ship he detained did not contain Thrawn. Thrawn would instead stay on the planet and study the art of the Vac, surmising the people considered all points of view and that they thoroughly considered all options before deciding on something. Because of this, he believed Vac would not trust Yiv and the Nekar Dune to lead over them, or any group like this that prevented them from considering all sides and making thought out decisions. Before escaping Primia, Thrawn and Alyastov would share this information with as many of the Vac people as possible. However, as they would enter space and meet with Aralani, who was currently commanding the Vigilant, 13 Vac fighters would appear assuming attack formation. Though unbeknownst to the 13 fighters, a 14th Vac ship would appear, but it would be piloted by Captain Thrawn, who had just escaped the planet. Thrawn would pretend as though he was firing at the Chiss vessel, but in reality he was actually sending schematics of the Vac fighters to Aralani, who would attempt to use this data to disable the Vac fighters without destroying them. However, following this and before Aralani could disable anything, four pirate warships would appear out of hyperspace and launch an attack on the Chiss, who would subsequently retreat as they did not currently have an apt defense against the incoming barrage. The Chiss Ascendancy would respond to the Leowin pirate attack by launching an assault of their own, using the Vigilant and the Springhawk where they would be victorious, maximizing the message they intended to send while minimizing the damage they caused. While preparing their next move against the Nekardun Destiny, Thrawn would be permitted to search for allies who possibly resisted being controlled by the enemy, and potential allies who managed to keep this resistance unknown to Yiv. While on this trek, Thrawn's ship would detect an energy shield generator far more advanced than any in the unknown regions, the generator actually belonging to the Separatist Alliance. However, he would also meet none other than General Anakin Skywalker while traveling beyond the unknown regions into a mission being conducted by the Galactic Republic. Thrawn and Skywalker would team up and destroy a Separatist base, with Thrawn and the Chiss receiving the generator from the Republic, and Anakin being assisted by Thrawn in search for Padme Amidala and one of her handmaidens. Both Thrawn and Anakin would praise each other, with Thrawn learning of the Clone Wars via Skywalker, leading him to the belief that the Republic was an inefficient government. Anakin would actually inform Chancellor Palpatine about the Chiss, noting his talent and intellect. Upon his return to the unknown regions of space, using Deception, the Republic shield generator, and with the back turning on the Nekar Dune after they are mistreated, Thrawn would plan and set up a highly intricate trap, leading to the defeat of General Yiv in the Nekar Dune destiny at the hands of the Chiss Ascendancy. The Chiss, along with Thrawn, would set up campaigns to destroy any remains of the enemy, leading into the year 18 BBY and causing the complete and utter downfall of the Nekar Dune. I think it's worth mentioning that this is the same year where Thrawn would lose Thras as he would die aboard a non-Chiss starship attempting to help the pilot. Ensuing this great victory for the Chiss people, Thrawn and the Chiss would further a rivalry with the species known as the Grisk. One particular Grisk named Jixtus would prove quite dangerous to the Chiss and especially Thrawn, though he would later die after killing himself to avoid capture at the hands of Thrawn, despite causing some damage to the Chiss fleet. Shortly after these events, Thrawn would begin cruising through the Outer Rim once again and discover a group of Nemoidians, who begged Thrawn to have the Chiss Ascendancy attack the newly formed Galactic Empire. Thrawn did not really trust these Nemoidians and instead returned to his people to evaluate whether or not the Empire would make a reliable ally against the remaining threat of the Grisk Armada. Being helped by some of the higher-ups, Thrawn would concoct a plan where he would take full blame for the political dissension amongst the ruling families after the events of the Grisk's defeat. With this blame, he would be entirely stripped of his rank within the Ascendancy and would be exiled. 
While in fake exile, Thrawn would join the Empire to test how valuable of an ally they would be, and in 15 BBY, Thrawn would be discovered by an Imperial Venator called the Strikefest, and he would board said Venator and meet Cadet Eli Vanto, who would eventually become his assistant, translator, and protege. Following this, Thrawn would be presented directly in front of the Emperor, and he would tell Palpatine that he could act as a resource for the Empire, as well as mentioning the threat that Chiss had to deal with in the Grisk. Interestingly enough, Thrawn mentions the name Skywalker as someone who could attest to his trustworthiness, correctly guessing Anakin to be someone who worked under Palpatine, though he was not currently aware of his new identity as the mysterious Darth Vader. The Emperor would tell Thrawn that Anakin had died at the end of the Clone Wars and would also mention Anakin's praise to Thrawn, accepting Thrawn's prior offer of information about the Unknown Regions and offering him a spot in the Imperial Navy. Due to Palpatine's interest in the Unknown Regions, Thrawn would provide as much information on the subject as possible possible and also rise through the Imperial ranks swiftly after attending three months of the Royal Imperial Academy on Coruscant. While at the Academy, Thrawn would gain the rank of Lieutenant after training in hand-to-hand -hand combat as well as Imperial military tactics, procedures, and technology. Something to note is that Thrawn, and by extension Eli Vanto, would be essentially bullied mostly due to the fact that Eli Vanto was from the Outer Rim and Thrawn was non-human, something exceedingly rare within the Empire. Thrawn would mostly ignore this as it didn't really bother him and he knew by ignoring the bullies he would just make them angry, eventually causing them to try something more daring something that could be punishable. Thrawn's prediction would be proven correct as there would be a time where two cadets would offer the Chiss and his friend to play a card game, and knowing full well that they were trying to make it look like they were gambling, Thrawn would accept and turn the plan of the two cadets against them as they would set their plan up into motion by calling in a higher up. But Thrawn would put on his lieutenant badge, which he typically did not wear due to not finding it normally useful, and because of this, Thrawn could not be scolded, causing the two cadets to be the ones in trouble instead. Something interesting I want to mention quickly is that after Thrawn graduates from the Imperial Academy, he is given a second badge as the higher up in charge for the ceremony, forgot that he gave Thrawn a badge upon his arrival at the start of his three months. Anyhow, after serving aboard the Blood Crow, an Imperial cruiser, and meeting Admiral Wolf Yalaren and Governor Price for the first time on Coruscant, Thrawn would be promoted to captain and would act as first officer aboard the Imperial light cruiser, the Thunder Wasp, with Vanto still acting as his assistant. Thrawn would move on to gain a victory on Umbara against insurgents and would immerse himself in the Yaren culture of the planet, studying their military strategies in the process. After investigating a case with Yalaren involving Night Swan, a codename used for rebel activities, helping Governor Price with an issue she had with another member of the Empire blackmailing her, and helping Palpatine map out the unknown regions, Thrawn would settle a land dispute and uncover a smuggling plot on the planet of Sifar and the Midrim. Subsequently, Thrawn would obtain the rank of Commodore, the badge being gifted by Grand Moff Tarkin, and he would continue to achieve the feat of rising that quickly through the Imperial ranks, something never done before. This is also where Thrawn is given the infamous Chimera, an Imperial class Star Destroyer, where he commands over the 7th fleet. Something else I should quickly mention is Thrawn's loyal bodyguard and assassin Rook, who would help Thrawn throughout his battles, particularly later on during the Battle of Lothal. Soon after, Thrawn would discover the plans for the Death Star and admit that he believed the project was a considerable waste of resources and would just be a huge target for any potential attackers, which as we know would prove true later on. Additionally, he would add that a wiser decision would be to invest the resources into more versatile warships and starfighters, expanding the naval fleet, something he would do in Legends when he establishes the Empire of the Hand after the fall of the initial Empire under Sidious. After exceptionally commanding many battles, most recently on Bataan, and strengthening his connection with some of the Imperial higher-ups, including Lothal's Governor Price, Thrawn would finally acquire the prestigious rank of Grand Admiral from Emperor Palpatine himself. Interestingly, Thrawn would voice his concerns over the Death Star, stating that he did not want it used on his people, and that he also believed it was a waste of resources, as I mentioned earlier. Palpatine responds by saying he has no intention of harming the Chiss, and that the Grand Admiral left his system off the chart of the Unknown Regions anyway, with Palpatine also stating that he believes the cost of the resources is worth it for a device so powerful. Lord Vader would soon enter the chamber, and the pair would greet one another with Thrawn considering it an honor to finally meet the notorious enforcer of the Empire. Thrawn would bid a temporary farewell to Eli Vanto before sending him to a set of coordinates leading to Aralani and the Chiss in the Unknown Regions. This is where Thrawn begins to plan his strategic offensive maneuvers against a cell of rebels known as Phoenix Squadron, led by the captain of the Ghost and highly talented Twi'lek pilot, Harris Andula. I will start my operations here. 
and pull the rebels apart piece by piece. They'll be the architects of their own destruction. In this year, 2BBY, Grand Animal Thrawn would help Governor Price with her rebel insurgency problem on the fall. Regarding the crew of the Ghost, along with the help of Admiral Constantine, Grand Moff Tarkin, and ISB Agent Callus, who eventually turns out to be a secret aide of the rebels under the codename of Fulcrum, the Thrawn would of course eventually deduce this after several tests to prove his suspicions. This same year, Thrawn would propose a new Imperial Starfighter called the TIE Defender, which unlike any fighter in the TIE series, would come equipped with a hyperdrive and deflector shield. In addition, Thrawn would also temporarily occupy Hera's homeworld of Ryloth in order to deal with the Twi'lek rebels. During this time, he would also, in typical Thrawn fashion, study the Aryan culture of Ryloth. In the midst of attempting to locate the ghost crew, Mon Mothma, and the Rebel Alliance as a whole, Thrawn would eventually discover the location of a prime rebel base of operations on Adalon, known as Chopper Base. It is here where Thrawn would overwhelm the rebel fleet in space, while also initiating a ground assault. And despite the rebels escaping, Thrawn would inflict heavy casualties to the rebel alliance. Something to note is that while on the ground of Adalon, Thrawn would learn of a creature named the Bendu, who would correctly predict his future, stating that he saw his defeat, like many arms surrounding him, in a cold embrace. Nonetheless, in the meantime, Thrawn would move on to join Vader on a mission to Batu in order to deal with the threat Palpatine sensed in the Force. On the journey, Thrawn admitted that he had surmised that Vader was once Anakin Skywalker, the general that assisted him, and that he helped in return all those years ago. The two would discover members of the Grisk species that Thrawn knew all too well, in addition to young Force-sensitive Chisk girls being held captive. Thrawn would tell Vader that a galaxy-wide attack would likely soon come from the Grisk, as they planned to overtake the Chiss ascendancy as well as the space under the regime of the Empire, with Thrawn also stating that he promises to remain loyal to the Empire and to carry out his duties until there are no remaining threats to neutralize, at which point he will return to his people. Plans would change, however, However, as after indirectly getting involved in the Civil War on Mandalore, and of course studying their Aryan culture, Thrawn would return to Lothal from Coruscant where he would lose to the Rebels, and specifically Jedi Ezra Bridger. With the aid of the Pergils, Ezra would sacrifice himself in a move that would surprise the Grand Admiral, causing the Pergils and Thrawn's Chimera to enter hyperspace, leading them to another galaxy entirely. Ezra Bridger and Thrawn would be stranded on the planet Peridio, where Thrawn would use his many skills, as well as the assistance of the Night Sisters residing there in his loyal army of night troopers to survive until the arrival of Morgan Elsbeth, Balin Skull, and Shin Hot T in 9 APY, where Elsbeth would help him prepare for his return to the main galaxy as heir to the Empire. That's essentially the entire life of Grand Admiral Thrawn in canon thus far, and I'm thinking about perhaps making a short going over his expeditions and legends as leader of the aforementioned Empire of the Hand, or at least briefly discussing what it was and what it accomplished. Anyhow, I hope you all enjoyed. Have a great day. See ya.